Welcome to our lecture online. We now know that quasars are powered by supermassive black holes at the center of the host galaxies that we now know as quasars. So quasars are what's in the center of the galaxy. It's a supermassive black hole and essentially the radiation from that black hole comes from the accretion disk around the black hole. So it's an active black hole. A dormant black hole that is not swallowing up material would not act like a quasar. So these are active black holes actively pulling in material and it's a swirling accretion disk that's producing this enormous amount of radiation that outperforms, outshines the galaxy by thousands of times. So, how why is it so difficult to see what's really going on? Well, it turns out that since the the black hole, the accretion disk around the black hole produces such an enormous amount of radiation and notice the radiation goes all the way from, and where do I have it written down here? It radiates strongly all the way from the far infrared to x-rays. So that's a wide band of radiation, massive quantities of it that far outshines the stars in the galaxy themselves. So looking for the galaxy is like looking for a small candle placed right next to the high beam of a car. The high beam of the car, the glare of that beam, will be so intense that you would not see the candle. So we need to use very special techniques and filtering systems to kind of block the light of the quasar to some extent so we can see the rest of the galaxy. And when we began to see that, we, when we began to do that, we began to see that these quasars were always positioned near the center of these galaxies that are far, far away, moving away from us at very high recession speeds. So besides the ones that also radiate strongly from the far infrared to the x-rays, we have about 10% of all the quasars that also radiate very strong radio signals. 3C273, one of the first discovered quasars, is one of those that also produces strong radio signals. By the way, it's the radio signals that allowed us to find these quasars. So initially, we were only finding quasars that had strong radio signals. Now we're finding quasars, many of them that do not produce the wrong radio signals. In the next video, we'll give you more of an idea of how that actually works. Some also radiate gamma rays, so there's so much intense radiation being produced, not just x-rays, but even gamma rays are produced in the accretion disk or around the, around the accretion disk of that supermassive black hole. Now there are over 200,000 known quasars, so there's a lot of work that's been done in discovering these quasars, about 10%, about 20,000 or so are also strong radio signal producers, but all of them are very powerful producers of all the various bands of radiation, predominantly from the far infrared to the x-rays. And so, again, it's this massive black hole at the center that produces this enormous amount of energy due to the accretion disk around it when they're active. So when the, the fall, the, the, uh, when the material is being accelerated and falls into the center of the black hole, at that point, that's when these enormous amount of energies are produced. And so we'll get a little bit better of an idea of the mechanization of that. But that's the source. Ultimately, the secret was unfolded, so to speak, or the we found we got to the bottom of the of the puzzle by realizing these fuzzy little blue patches that we thought were stars are ultimately large galaxies far away moving at very high speed containing supermassive black holes that are currently active at least at the time when the light left those galaxies because that was billions of years ago they had active massive black holes at the center in falling material accretion disk producing this enormous amount of radiation and glare outshining the galaxy hundreds of times, thousands of times, in some cases tens of thousands of times. And that is what we know as a quasar. Do they have to be in the middle of the galaxy? It turns out, so are, are the quasars in the middle of the galaxy? And the answer is yes. All of them have the supermassive black holes near the center of their galaxies. So predominantly, that's where we find the supermassive black holes of is galaxies. That's where we find them? Well, we haven't seen active galaxies with black holes that are somewhere else besides their center. So they're usually it's, it's at the center of the, of the central bulge of the galaxy. Why? That's a good question. <laughs> Why is the question? Well, I'll have to think about that. Um, there's something in the mechanization 
that causes the majority of the mass to fall into a black hole at the center. So I think we need to go back to the very early stages of the formation of the universe, try and understand why black holes formed at the center of those galaxies. I don't think that's fully known. Could, I've, it, could it be because that there's not enough stars around for the, for the, um, for the black hole? to absorb things from beyond the um, event horizon? So you're saying, you're asking, where is it that the black holes are able to get the material? Yeah. And, and it's, it's definitely uh, known that the center of the galaxy is where it's most dense. So the central bulge is where you have the most dense material. Stars are much closer together there. You're much more likely to have material to encapsulate into the black hole. But there's one more secret, one more secret that tells us about quasars that helps us understand that a little bit more. But you're, you're absolutely right that the, the center of the galaxies, where the very center of the central bulge is, that's where you have the most dense material. Most stars, the highest density, the most likely place for a black hole to gather a lot of material. We know there's black holes all over the galaxy, but those tend to be small. So a few times, five times, 10 times, 20, 30 times the mass of the sun. The ones at the center tends to be thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions and billions of times the mass of the sun. So those are the ones that we see. That is correct. We can only see them for two reasons. They're active, so then we see all the radiation and the accretion disk and the radial lobes and all that. Or they're inactive, and then we can see them by what goes on around them. Now, of course, in galaxies that are that far away, we wouldn't be able to see inactive black holes because they're just simply too far away. Good questions.